Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Eleanor Hawkins, and welcome to Tell a Story Time. I want to read the poem, The Library, A Magic Castle. Come to the magic castle when you are growing tall. Rows upon rows of word windows line every single wall. They reach up high, as high as the sky, and you want to open them all. For every time you open one, a new adventure has begun. The library, a magic castle. And now, boys and girls, we're going to have snow stories for this morning. And the first one I've chosen is entitled, Frosty the Snowman. Frosty the Snowman came to town one bright cold winter's day. The first real snow of the winter had fallen the night before. In the morning, out came the children, and they started to roll snowballs. Round and round the snowy yard, they rolled the snowballs. Soon they had two fine big ones. Round and round the yard again, there was a little snowman, just the right size for a snowman's head. Billy ran home and brought two bits of coal to use for the snowman's eyes. And Sally gave him a button nose and a funny corncob pipe. Tommy brought floppy galoshes and a scarf for the snowman. And Joe brought him a pair of old red mittens to wear. Now we need a hat, said Sally and Joe. So they all began to look around. Sally found an old cap, but it just didn't look right. Billy found a battered felt hat, but it still didn't seem right. And just then, down the street came the whistling wind, and it blew to their feet a shiny top hat. Just what we need, cried Sally and Joe. It's just like magic, said Billy and Tommy. It was Tommy who picked up the shiny top hat and put it on the snowman's head. Seeing Tommy's hand sprang back with a shock. Oh, it's magic, gasped Tommy. So it is, said a voice, deep, chuckly voice, that they had never heard before, and a pleasant sort of magic, if I do say so myself. It's the snowman, whispered Sally, and so it was. Frosty the snowman at your service, said he. That's how Frosty the snowman came alive. If you have never had a snowman for a friend, you can scarcely imagine all the fun those children had. First, Frosty took them coasting and never had their sled slid so swiftly and so far. Frosty helped them build a snow house and never had blocks packed so firmly and so well. They all went ice skating, and the magical part was that while they were with Frosty, the children could stay out and play in the snow and never get shivery cold. Now, was it Frosty's warm heart or his magical smile? Whatever it was, they thought it was fine. Each morning when the children came out to play, Frosty had a wonderful plan all set. One morning he said, well, let's go shopping today. I've never seen a store, you know. So they all joined hands and away they skipped, off toward town where the shops stood in a row. It was fun showing Frosty around, for he thought every window was wonderful. All around the town they led Frosty that day, while the warm wintry sun shone down. Soon they came to a corner, and around the corner came a warm, gusty wind. Off went Frosty's hat, and away went Frosty after it. Then Tweet sang the traffic cop's loud whistle, and the children could not follow Frosty because traffic streamed by, buses and trucks and cars. Tweet went the traffic cop's whistle again. The crossing stood empty before them now, but there was not a sign of Frosty to be seen. Only down the street his top hat rolled, all by itself, in the melting snow. Mr. Policeman 
The children cried, Where has Frosty the Snowman gone? Oh, said the policeman, Frosty the Snowman has gone away, where all snowmen go on a sunny day. But he'll be back at your bidding and call whenever great heaps of snow of snowflakes fall. And that, boys and girls, is the story of Frosty the Snowman. And now, boys and girls, stay tuned, and we'll be back in just a moment to read from our big Do You Know book. Stay tuned. And now, boys and girls, I'm going to read from our big Do You Know book. Do you know we have all kinds of precipitation during the month of March? Do you know precipitation is a word for different forms of water that fall from clouds like rain, snow, hail, and sleet? Do you know rain is liquid water falling in drops that measure more than two hundredths of an inch? Do you know that all about freezing rain and sleet and snow, that freezing rain is liquid water that freezes as it falls through the, to the ground and other surfaces at temperatures below freezing. Do you know sleet is drops of water that freeze in cold air and reach the ground as ice? Do you know snow is ice crystals that form in clouds and fall to the ground? Do you know that Wilson A. Bentley was born on February the 9th 19 and 5 on a farm in Vermont. And for years and years as a little boy and later on for 50 years, he developed his technique of microphotography to photograph snowflakes. And do you know, he never found any two snowflakes alike. His parents gave him a camera when he was about eight years old after he had saved his money trying to get a very special camera, and it was able to photograph snowflakes. Do you know when snowflakes fall in colder air, the snowflakes are fluffier? The fluffier snowflakes create deeper snow, which we all like. Boys and girls, I want you to learn more about snowflakes, so visit your library any of the libraries in the Craven, Pamlico, Carter Regional Library System. And you might look for the book about Wilson Bentley because we have a very good one that is written for children. Boys and girls, have a good time during our next show, but be sure and visit your library. And boys and girls, I'll be back in just a moment with another story. Stay tuned.
And now, boys and girls, I'm going to read you the story, The Cats Who Came for Dinner. One evening in spring, a man and a woman moved into a new apartment. Just outside their door, what, there was a garden. It was a pretty garden with flowers and grass and even a tree. They were very happy because it isn't easy to find a real garden for your very own right in the middle of a big city. The next morning, as soon as they woke up, they ran to the window to admire their garden. But what do you think they saw? Cats. They saw so many cats, they almost couldn't see the flowers or the grass or even the tree. Big cats, black cats, little cats, yellow cats, white cats, gray cats, and kittens. Cats with spots, cats with stripes, and every single cat was skinny, scroggly, scrawny, and smudged with the soot of the city. And every cat had fleas. Oh dear, cried the man and the woman. There are so many cats in our garden, there isn't room enough for us. They shouted, go away, shoo, go home. But the cats only sat there and stared at the man and woman. They could not go home because they had no home. The little garden was the only place they had to call their own. All the day the cats played in the pretty garden. They chased the bugs and the butterflies, and they smelled the flowers and climbed the tree and played a game of tap along the top of the fence. They had a very good time. But the man and the woman did not have a good time at all. They wanted to sow flower seeds and to mow the long grass and dig out the choking weeds and rest in the sweet spring sun. But with all those cats in the little garden, there simply wasn't enough room for them too. That night the cats disappeared. They went out in search of food. Every night they had to look for leftovers that had been thrown away, for since they had no home, they had no one to feed them. The man and woman went into the garden. They found a big hole under the fence. This is how those cats get in, they decided. We will fill it in and then we will have the garden for ourselves. They filled in the hole under the fence and the next morning they woke up smiling. They hurried to the window to admire their garden. But can you guess what they saw? Yes, cats. The big cats had climbed over the fence, and then they had dug a new hole under the fence to let in the kittens that were still too little to climb so high. Every day the cats played in the pretty garden. They just would not go away. The man and woman were the ones who had to stay away. They could only look at the weeds growing stronger and the grass growing longer. They could only look at the sun and their tree, and they were most unhappy. One evening, the woman found that there was a bit of milk left over after supper. I may as well give it to those skinny, scraggly, scrawny cats, she decided. She poured it into a pan and put it in the garden. Now that was on Monday. On Tuesday, she ordered a whole extra quart of milk from the milkman, by mistake, of course. Do you know what she did with it? Now, on Wednesday, she bought too much chopped meat at the butcher store. Another mistake? On Thursday, she came upon an extra dozen of eggs in her shopping bag. But they did not go to waste, for the eggs were, are fine for kittens. On Friday, the mackerel in the market looked so firm and fresh that the woman completely forgot that they were having supper with friends that evening. She bought some mackerel and brought it home. Then, of course, she didn't throw it away because she knew how cats feel about fish. Now, mind you, the woman warned the cats, 
Just because I give you food, you mustn't think I like having you here in our garden. I just happen to have bought this extra food by mistake. The cat sat still and stared at her. Then they all closed their big, round, yellow-green eyes. On Sunday, it rained. From their window, the man and woman could see the cats huddled together under the weeds. I don't have much to do today, the man announced. I think I'll rig up some kind of shelter for those cats, just for something to do. He made a tin of striped canvas and stretched it over a corner of the garden so the cats would have a dry place to sleep. But remember, he scolded, just because I've made a shelter for you from the rain, you are not to think I like having you here in our garden. I just happen to have nothing else to do today. The cat sat still and stared at him. Then each one winked one big round yellow green eye. And so summer went slowly by. The cats began to not be quite so skinny, scraggly, scrawny, because the woman fed them every day. Oh, they began to feel good. And when cats feel good, as you probably noticed, they begin to wash themselves. They washed and they washed, and they washed away their smudge of city soot. They washed so hard, they even washed away their fleas. Then one day, winter came. All of a sudden, it snowed, and the wind was wild. The man and woman stayed indoors, warm and snug. The cats huddled together under the icicles in the little garden. The man and the woman almost couldn't see them through the thick frost on the window, but they knew that they were there because now they knew that the cats had no other place to go. I think I'll do a bit of building in my, at my workbench in the basement, said the man, just to get some practice, you understand. He worked all day hammering and sawing. He worked almost all night, too. The woman couldn't sleep for all the racket he was making, bang, bang, bang. And she could not sleep in the quiet in between because then she could hear the meowing of the cats in the cold quiet of the snow. In the, mor in the morning, she ran to the window. Now, what do you think she saw? Yes, cats. But look what else, too, a row of tiny houses. They went into the garden, the man and the woman. This time, they did not shout and stamp. This time, she did not scold and swish her apron. This time, they said, Now, at first, we did not want you here. But now, we must admit that we have come to like having you for our very own. We know now that there is room for all of us in this pretty garden. And that, boys and girls, is a story of the cats who stayed for dinner. And now stay tuned, and we'll be back with another story all about snow in just a moment.
And now, boys and girls, I'm going to read you the story, Mr. Buttons. I want to make a snowman, said Tommy, with his nose pressed into the window pane. Judy and David sat up in bed. Yes, it had snowed in the night. The roofs and the ground were white. Oh, it was not long before the children were playing in the fresh snow. Get on my sled, Tommy, said Judy. Let's go up over the hill and see what Johnny Jones is doing. I want to make a snowman, said Tommy. Johnny is sure to be making a snowman, said David, on a day like this. But you know he wasn't. His snowman was finished, and he was carrying pails of water to the hillside for a slide. We'll help you, said David and Judy, and they went off with Johnny. Tommy sat still on the sled and stared at the snowman. Then he climbed off and started to roll a big ball of snow. One big ball. Then two big balls. He was just starting to make a third ball when Judy came hurrying back to find him. I'm going to make a snowman and take him home on the sled, said Tommy. We're going to take you home on the sled, said Judy. You can make a snowman when we get home. He might crack up on the way home on the sled. Well, Tommy hadn't thought of that, but as soon as they got into their own yard, he began to make a snowball. It got bigger and heavier and harder to roll, and pretty soon he couldn't even push it a bit farther. David had a great big ball of snow, too, and Judy had a little one, and when they put the, all the balls on top of one another, they made a fine big snowman. David ran to the attic for an old stovepipe hat. Judy found a broom for the snowman to hold and Tommy brought a red scarf to keep him warm. He looks real, doesn't he? asked Tommy. A little later, as they were eating lunch in the kitchen, what would you do if he knocked at the door and asked for some hot soup? And just then there was a knock at the door. Tommy was so excited that he dropped his spoon, but it was only the coal man who had come to deliver a load of coal. The children always like to see the coal going down through the chute, through the, through the basement windows, so they finished their lunch in a hurry and ran out to watch. The coal man had dumped the coal and was moving his truck away from the cellar window. Oh, cried Judy, look out for the snowman, shouted Tommy. At last they were too late. The coal truck backed right into the snowman. Oh, tears came to Tommy's eyes. There was the heap of snow on the ground. There was the broken broom, and there was the red scarf, but no snowman and no hat. We'll make another snowman this afternoon, said David quickly, and we'll put him in the garden where he'll be safe. Don't cry, Tommy, said the truck driver. Look, here are some big shiny buttons to use in making your new snowman. And we'll call him Mr. Button, said Tommy. And he began to smile. They used the pieces of the broom handle to make his arms. They tied the red scarf around his neck in a big bow. And when do you suppose, and where do you suppose they found his hat? In the coal bin. Yes, right on top of the pile of coal. When Judy tied a green ribbon around it, it looks just as good as new. With the carrot for his nose and the shiny black buttons on his chest, the snowman was very handsome indeed. That night before Tommy got into bed, he looked out of his window. The moon was bright and yellow, and he could plainly see the snowman standing under the big pear tree. Good night, Mr. Buttons, called Tommy and waved his hand. And down there in the garden, with the moonlight shining on him, Tommy was sure that Mr. Buttons waved his arms to say good night. And that, boys and girls, is the story of Mr. Buttons. And now I want to read you just this title of Snow. 
and I have my place marked. Snow is cold. No two snowflakes are exactly alike. Snow is wet. Snow stops cars. Fun fact, a lot of snow piled up by the wind is called a snow, a snow drift. Snow stops airplanes. And snow closes schools. Snow closes stores. And snow covers plants. Snow covers animal houses. And boys and girls, we want it, let it snow. And that is the story of snow. And now I have time enough to remind you to be sure and have your parents read to you tonight because this is Read Across America Month. And boys and girls, after they read to you, you read them a story too and surprise them. And now I see it's time to close our book of stories. Let's all wish for snow, a good nice snow, because we only had a little bit over this past weekend. So until next Saturday morning, this is Eleanor Hawkins saying bye-bye for Tell a Story Time.